I've always been so defined by my intellect, my language, my articulation, and now sometimes I can see the words hanging in front of me and I can't reach them and I don't know who I am and, and I don't know what I'm going to lose next. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm Gary. And, and this, this is What, what Do We, we know? know? That was really good. <laughs> So it's family day here in Canada this week and to honor that we decided we were going to shoot it at home rather than going to our restaurant. We have our taquitos and our potato skins mm -hmm. and we're all set with another movie. <laughs> so this week I thought I'd go a little bit more serious with the movie and I picked the movie Still Alice. Uh, so Still Alice is a film that follows the story of Alice um, who is a linguistics professor and very intelligent. Um, who gets the unfortunate diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's disease. Um, so basically this story follows her journey as she copes and tries to hold on to the things that she, um, that means the most to her. So I don't know if you know it, but uh, in, in 2014, Sony was actually hacked mm -hmm. and all of their movies were downloaded. Yeah. So this was actually one of the movies that was downloaded mm -hmm. um, and leaked out. So it was actually officially released in January 2015, but it got leaked out in November 2014. So um, the actors in this show, some pretty big names, Juliana Moore, mm -hmm. Alec Baldwin, and um, Kristen Stewart, right? Mm -hmm. um, who of course was Twilight fame. <laughs> <laughs> um, all pretty big names. And Juliana Moore, she won a ton of awards for this movie. So she, she, um, she did an awesome job she portraying really the character. Mm -hmm. yeah. Juliana Moore actually spent four months researching um, yeah. Alzheimer's disease so that she could portray the part. It can definitely come through like you can see that in her acting um, it, because obviously like she doesn't have Alzheimer's so she doesn't know mm -hmm. what it's like um, but to be able to portray something with such like you guys watched it mom said she cried during it. I was very close to tears but I didn't cry. The only reason I was gonna cry was mom was like Think of me when well, mom doesn't have Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> Alec Baldwin, man, he's a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Kristen Stewart. Yeah. I, I think she's only got one face. You know, she's got that really intense. One. Yeah, you. That's it. Yeah, really intense face. That's Kristen Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Cast me. <laughs> I can do it. Sorry, no offense to <laughs> Kristen Stewart. No, I mean, she's a good she actress. She does a good job, but... I, I loved the little piece in the movie where she was acting an actress, and she did the piece And she was the just play. the exact same. Yeah, well, it was the same character. <laughs> she's kind same. of typecast, I think. That's it. I, yeah. Yeah. Well, she gets typecasted as the edgy kind of, like, outsider that's, like... The teen with angst. Yeah. <laughs> very angsty. Yeah. I think... Like Juliana Moore did a very, very good job. Like it, it, that, that's definitely like a tough role, yeah. especially to portray the, um, spoiler alert. Um, you know when she has, uh, this whole plan set to if she can't, she has a set amount of questions on her phone, and if she can't answer them, she goes to her dresser and takes a bottle of pills and she has to take them all and lie down and basically overdose and she did a very good job of um portraying the uh, the sadness and the anger but then also the kind of confusion when she stumbles upon it later on in her diagnosis mm -hmm. when she's got more of the symptoms and she's further on into the alzheimer's and she's kind of confused when she stumbles upon this thing she's smiling she sees herself on the computer she doesn't know what it is so as soon as she, yeah, and, and yeah. She, she, it's like, hi, Alice, I'm you. And she's like, oh, like, I didn't know that I had this. And of course, she has to watch it many times, but she goes through with it. Well, she doesn't go through with it, but like she tries to. Um, but just that whole, the process of the diagnosis and the symptoms and as it got worse and worse, she did a very good job mm -hmm. of continuing with it. And it was a very... It would be very, very hard to it, do that. So. It was a very serious subject that they had to cover, right? And, yeah. And 
they all portrayed it really well. It was interesting seeing the whole family dynamic and all the actors kind of playing off each other. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's really what the, the charm of the story is, is, is just seeing how it all works out. I mm -hmm. mean, there's not really a conclusion to the movie, right? It's life. Yeah. Right? Uh, it was a four million dollar budget, which you know, I mean, it wasn't a. It's not like a big action flick where they gotta destroy all kinds of cars yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And so you know, it wasn't like they had to spend a lot on that. But I felt like they really picked good locations that really made you believe you were in the story. That it was it was mm -hmm. believable for the family. Um, you really got involved in it. They did a really good job of casting the family because it was very much a family dynamic. <laughs> Um, sometimes you get certain people who work together who might not click as well and you kind of notice that they're acting but with these ones it was very it was very good like the mm -hmm. the chemistry between each character although uh, Tom right the boy the son mm -hmm. um, although Tom I didn't feel like he really had a big role in, in he didn't do a whole lot no no he was kind of like the support kind <laughs> of background <laughs> yeah kind of background like I'm in the mm -hmm. story but I'm not really part of it and you know I didn't. maybe he didn't have as much time to put in the movie yeah <laughs> but but the rest of the dynamics were cool because you know John um, he was supportive of his wife but he didn't stop his life right he yeah. kept, kept going he just he kept doing what he mm -hmm. was going to be doing he was going to the Mayo Clinic and and that was his life and so he didn't stop his life just mm -hmm. because his wife was sick he was going to take care of her and look after things mm -hmm. and he wasn't going to let that bother and that might be good or bad depending on how you look at it right? well and I mean him too he when he when the Alzheimer's kind of got to the point where you know she couldn't do much on her own she was forgetting even who her nurse was and things in a matter of minutes um, and he wanted to continue on with his career and continue on with things but he felt like he couldn't do that because he needed to help her so he passed her off to Lydia and Lydia was like, I don't mind, of course I'm going to be here for this. And he was like, well, you're a better man than me. Yeah. Lydia was kind of a, a fun character, actually, because she was kind of the outlier. She was, um, everybody thought, you know, well, she's just the flaky mm -hmm. person who's doing drama and, and can't get a real job and, you know, isn't going to amount to anything. And yet, in the end of the movie, she's the one that ends up taking care of Alice, right? Yeah. And that's the real turnaround, right? It, here's somebody who um, they didn't think had any value, has all kinds of value, right? I found it kind of funny that Alice is constantly pushing for Lydia to go to college, but it was because she wasn't in college, yeah. wasn't doing those things, that she had the time and, like, the resources and things to put into taking care of her mom. Yeah. Or if she had have gone to college and things, she would have had to take time off school and all the money that goes towards school she wouldn't have. And On the other hand, the character Anna, the other daughter... She was very much like Alice would have been, right? Mm -hmm. Very career driven, you know, all about the right, doing the right thing, getting mm -hmm. the right places, and, and everything else. It would have been harder for her to take care of the mom after she found out that she also had this gene. So it was like a hundred percent chance that she had a familial um, mutation of the Alzheimer's disease, which meant that basically the children had a fifty-fifty chance of getting the disease. And then once they and then if they had the gene, it would be a 100% chance that they would get Alzheimer's mm -hmm. or develop Alzheimer's. Um, and then when Anna found out that she had the gene, it would have been very hard for her to come and take care of her mom seeing her future. That's true. I hadn't thought about that, too. But on the other hand, I was thinking that, um, you know, it was like Anna would have been Alice had she known way back early, right? Mm -hmm. Like Alice only found out when she actually got the disease and started to manifest it yeah whereas Anna found out way before right and I kind of felt like that would have been Alice back then if she had known and would mm. it have changed anything she did no she would have I don't think it would have changed her life anything. The way she did. yeah well she loved linguistics and poured her whole life into communication mm -hmm. um, and so I don't feel like that would have changed anything she might have I don't know experienced more things that she wanted to experience but like she said she was like this is my whole life is this education and learning and teaching so for her it might not have not done anything different but for Anna it might but but for her when she finds out it's very much like she's there during family gatherings or she's there you know when she has the baby but then after that we don't like see she kind her, of separates we don't talk herself to from her. her mom. Yeah, it's kind of like once yeah. she finds out, 
but that's it. She kind of is distant. Um, but then once she finds out, we learn that Lydia didn't want the answer. And Lydia is the one that we see more and more getting more involved with her mom. And maybe that's why, maybe that's part of the reason, you know, she didn't want it, want to know. So maybe that was because she wanted to be with her mom through this. And if she did get the answer and it was a positive, she might have not wanted that connection with her mom. Mm -hmm. That's my inference. I don't know. Well, I think some people some people may look at it and say, you know, what difference would it make to my life? So why would I really want to know? Yeah, right. Of course. I think the whole overlaying kind of theme of the the movie. I mean, just judging by the title, even, and it's the title of the book as well, right? Um, was that she is still Alice? I mean, even though she was losing all of her intellect and all of her her linguistic skills and um, hardly knew what was going on around her, she was still Alice. She, she still had value, and I think Lydia really showed that she had value mm -hmm. by being there for her right? yeah oh yeah definitely and constantly validating her and everything that she was doing like there's a part where lydia reads this monologue to mm -hmm. her mom and her mom is sitting there and she's got this huge smile on her face and she's nodding and she's listening and after lydia asks her what it was about and her mom kind of sits there for a bit smiling and she just says love <sighs> Love. Yeah, love. Yeah, Ma. It was about love. <laughs> and it, it wasn't about love. Um, but Lydia goes, yeah. Like, yeah. That's it what it's all love. about. It's all about love. And <laughs> underlying themes here yeah, yeah. Um, is the constant ongoing um, validation and support from the family member. So, so the original book was written by Lisa Genova, um, who wrote the book based on the experience that she had with her grandmother. She was actually a neurologist, so she had a, a background in it um, to be able to uh, understand it and write about it. And I think she did a really good job of putting that together. The guy who produced it, Richard Glatzer, he actually had ALS, oh. and he um, he he produced the movie while he was sick with ALS. And actually, uh, he the the movie was released in January 2015, and then he actually died in March 2015, like just after. Oh, wow! Yeah. So it's like can you? So some of the, some of the experiences were from him, um, yeah. like his experiences with people as well that was put into the movie. Um. I think what I liked about the movie the most was the acting um, and the portrayal and the emotion that they put into it um, and how, how real it was. Um, I think just like, I didn't have very many complaints about it um, because it was very, very much real. I appreciated that she didn't go through with the suicide, that she got interrupted and she wasn't able to do it. Um, and I kind of, I really appreciated how the movie ended. Yeah. How it wasn't like, uh, you know, very sad, she's like in the hospital kind of deal, or um, she's lost her mind completely. She's still Alice. She's still fighting for the things that she loves. She's still, you know, with people that support her. And um, it was just a very satisfying ending, mm. even though it was kind of left open to interpretation how it would end um i really appreciated that because that just kind of uh, like contributed to the real feeling i kind of agree that it, it, it kind of ended with that um, life goes on and and this is still alice and and all of that you know in that kind of way i mean it's it's one of those endings where it's it's not very satisfying in the sense that there's not a real conclusion but then mm -hmm. life isn't like that right mm -hmm. it doesn't wrap up in nice neat packages and mm -hmm. i think that was really portrayed well it's in the movie very so, real. yeah I, I can't really say that there was anything I didn't like about the movie either. It was it was very well made. Um, you know, I mean, it just wasn't a big blockbuster thing. And that's that's okay. That's not the kind of movie it's meant to be. It doesn't um, make a good movie or bad movie. No, so. no. Um, so I mean, was it entertaining? Well, I don't. Again, I don't think it was that kind of movie. It no. Was, it was a, a movie to make you think and make you feel, and mm -hmm. it definitely did both of those. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily, you know. 
I wouldn't call it a chick flick or like a romantic flick, but it kind of has that same kind of you need to be in the mood to watch it. Yeah. Because it, it might bring you down. <laughs> so you need to be in a mood to be prepared for that. Um, it's definitely not something that, you know, you and your buddies are getting together. You know, watch Still Alice. <laughs> um, so on a rating of 1 to 10 taquitos, what would you give it? Actually, I, w- I was thinking about it, and I think I would give it a nine taquitos because mm. the acting was really good. Yeah. The, 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 like I say, you were really drawn into the story. The locations, everything kind of fit together so well. You, it, was, it was just a natural family, mm-hmm. a natural story, yeah. and it just all came together pretty well. Um, so, yeah, I, I give it a nine out of ten. I think I would give it a eight out of ten taquitos because I don't like being sad. <laughs> That's my only complaint. Hmm. But of course, you know, with a movie like this, you, you're going to be sad. So that's still Alice, 9 out of 10 for me, and 8 out, eight of, 10 out of 10 for Rachel. And uh, we'll see you next time on What Do I Know? <laughs>